In this video, we'll cover Tiffin Zone Management, Tiffin Unified Security Policy, the Infoblox Network Creation, Infoblox Network Mapping the Tiffin Zones, Changing Zones in Tiffin from Infoblox, and Deleting Zones in Tiffin from Infoblox. Lastly, we'll cover the benefits of this integration. For today's demonstration purposes, we're primarily going to be focusing on Secure Track, the core component of the Tufin Orchestration Suite. The Secure Track component of the Tufin Orchestration Suite abstracts all the policies from the underlying network security devices, private cloud, and public cloud platforms to understand network connectivity across the hybrid enterprise. Here we are at the Secure Track dashboard. Let's navigate off to network and the network zones. Zones in Tufin Secure Track consist of IPs, subnets, and security groups. Let's take a look at a zone. Here we see the IPs within this zone, in this case, AWS Public. Here we can see the subnets that constitute this zone. Zones are included in Tufin's Unified Security Policy, which is a zone-to-zone -zone based connectivity matrix. The Unified Security Policy enables organizations to define the services that zones can use to communicate with one another. This can be done through allowing or blocking specific services or allowing or denying all services. Here we can see that the DMZ zone is allowed to communicate with the corporate zone using TCP over port 2948 and HTTPS. Other services wouldn't be allowed. We can also define other characteristics of allowable rules, such as requiring a comment or expiration date, for example. Through the unified security policy, we are able to define who should be able to talk to who and how. Let's take a quick look at another example, such as risky services per PCI. Taking a quick look at the access block between these two zones displays the rules that are considered risky per PCI. While regulatory compliance is important, we may also want to implement a unified security policy for our non-regulated networks. We'll take a quick look at one for a hybrid network constituting a physical infrastructure, SDN, and public cloud. Important piece to note here is that you can create multiple USPs and their underlying zones to effectively operationalize your company's security policy. All right, let's take a look at Infoblox's grid manager. Let's add a new network in the grid manager. When we do this, we're going to create a new subnet within the network. In this case, new network for IPAM integration. We'll assign the subnet the address 26.26.20.0. Now let's see what happened in Tufin Secure Track. Here we see the network we just created in Infoblox Grid Manager is it now a zone within Tufin, complete with the IPs within it, as well as the notation that this has been imported from an IPAM. Let's modify the value which will be reflected in the name of the zone in Tufin. We'll do this by changing the name of the network to Change Network for IPAM integration. Let's save and close. Let's refresh Secure Track quickly. Here we can see that the changes in Infoblox have carried over. This type of data integration is helpful for organizations that maintain their network addressing organization grid manager and would like to carry that work over to their network segmentation strategy in Secure Track. Now, as addresses are added or removed, we can make sure that despite these changes that the zones in Secure Track are maintained and accurate. All right, let's remove this network from Infoblox Grid Manager and validate that the zone has also been removed from Tufin automatically. After deleting the network in Infoblox and refreshing Secure Track, we see that both the zone in Secure Track and the corresponding network in Infoblox are deleted. Now, the other important piece of this is to understand how violations to security policy in Secure Track are identified. The Secure Track Violations dashboard aggregates all the different violations created by the unified security policies and aggregates them by severity and by device. Here we see the information on the violations within the device. We can see when the violation was created, the source and destination of the offending rule, as well as Secure Track zone that they're located in, as well as the service that's violating the security policy we configured in the unified security policy. As we scroll down, we can see the list of all violations in this device, as well as their severity. Customers can benefit from the ability to identify violations due to changes within the network. So despite the fact that there are ongoing changes to different IPs within each zone, security policies effectively apply throughout. Consider this. When an IP is reassigned to a different zone in Infoblox, that IP is updated within Tufin. However, the policies that currently exist within the environment that provide connectivity may actually violate one of the USPs that are there. Tufin USP provides violation or learning mechanisms to alert the security team of the new risk imposed. Through this visibility, organizations can obtain a state of continuous compliance and understanding and preparation of the upcoming audit. Another option for customers to explore is the ability to decommission a server after removal in Infoblox. Consider an IP is removed from Infoblox. Although that IP is removed from Infoblox, that actual location still exists within the policies within the network. 
That means that when an IP is restored or that address is reassigned to another machine, the existing access within the network is still going to provide access to it. Through secure change workflow automation, we can actually decommission access to that object. So in the example where we have changes within the network, we're actually able to logically remove that access across all the network after we receive the update that the IP has been removed. To learn more about this solution and other Tufin solutions, please visit tufin.com.